With the current economic situation, you might find yourself wondering how your grandparents were able to hold their businesses, raise a family, and have a life when they went through the Great Depression. There are so many things you can learn from grandparents, including how to use your money to your advantage. Number 10. Delay Gratification We are most probably known as the generation of impulse buyers. Saw something on a TikTok ad? Buy it. Saw something as you were shopping for your groceries and had extra to spare? Buy it. We don't know what it means to delay a reward. We want something and we want it now, till we find out that it wasn't all we wanted and we could have spent our money on better. In the Great Depression, when money was hard to come by, money was particularly for needs, the basics you couldn't live without. If there was something you really wanted, you had to save for it. And sometimes when you got the money, that phase was over and you could spend the money on things that meant more to you. Don't rush out to get a new phone when the one you have works just fine. Wait a few months and there will probably be a better one on the market. If there is something you feel you can't live without, give it some time and see if you still feel the same way about it before you put your money into it. Just because you have the money doesn't mean you should spend it carelessly. Your $100 jacket does the job just as well as the $400 one that you're eyeing. Number 9. Save on Utilities Every dollar saved made a huge difference during the Great Depression. With our idea of surplus, we are irresponsible with our utilities. Sometimes the lights stay on all day, and we are not quick to turn off the water. All those extras end up in a bill that is coming for your money. Be more mindful of the spaces you walk out of. Switch off the lights in the room and close the tap. You will be grateful you remembered when you see the difference in your bill. In their time, they also had limited access to washers and dryers. They did everything by hand and let the sun dry their clothes. This may not be feasible every day, but on weekends when you have time, don't run the dryer. Just hang the clothes out to dry. If you have a small load of laundry, you can do it by hand. Let your hair air dry on wash day. They also went days without bathing, but we are not recommending that. Number 8. Sell items you don't need. You don't need to hoard everything. There's probably a sense of joy when you come home and see your novels spilling over your shelf or how many red pairs of shoes exist in your wardrobe. But if you are being honest, when was the last time you read most of those books or used those shoes? You've probably walked through your grandparents' homes and wondered if they were always that bare. You can make some money from those items you don't need. Hold on only to the ones that have more than monetary value to you. If it is not serving you in any other way, it should at least make money for you. Have a garage sale right in your neighborhood, or list those items on second-hand sites like Craigslist. A pair of shoes you haven't used in three years could easily translate into roughly $30. It will create room for you in your home and give you money to buy other things you will actually use. Number 7. Cook at home Because everyone needs to eat, we end up spending a large portion of our money on food, either on groceries or on eating out. Eating out, however, dips deeply into any of the money we had hoped to save. If you spend $20 on lunch for a week, you are already spending over $100, which you could have saved if you had packed your lunch. On average, the American millennial spends over $3,000 a year just by eating out. You can learn to make your favorite foods from home. In fact, ask your grandma to teach you her favorite recipes that got them through the Great Depression. Most are probably tasty without requiring too much. You will find recipes that don't require eggs, milk, or butter. If you want to take it a notch higher, buy some cookbooks from chefs whose work you have come to admire. This way, you get to try out cuisine from all over the world, all in the comfort of your home. You should also reuse leftovers. They couldn't afford to waste food in the Great Depression. If you have any salads left over from dinner, you could make a sandwich for lunch the next day with them. Number 6. Buy reusable products or secondhand. You save more in the long run when you buy reusable products over disposable items. Rather than get a foil for your food items, stock up on dishes that can serve for your leftovers and also for your guests when they come over. Invest in hand towels over disposable paper towels that you need to buy over and over. Use old clothes as rugs too. Buy secondhand from stores like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or eBay. The items there are mostly in good condition and have already proven they are usable rather than taking a chance on a first-hand item that could disappoint you in a few weeks. You should also invest in multi-purpose items so that you don't have to buy so many things. When you go shopping, you want to invest long-term, not getting clothes you won't wear more than once or shoes that will tear up after three washes. 
When it comes to cars, it's better to buy secondhand rather than lose an organ trying to pay off a first-hand car you can't afford. Number 5. Stock up when things go on sale or bargain. It might look like hoarding to some, but it was common sense to our grandparents, and it should be common sense to you as well. If you can get toilet paper and utensils on sale, don't hesitate. Buy bags of flour, cereal, and tinned vegetables as well. Buy as much as you can within reason and get more for your money. If it's something you genuinely enjoy eating, get as many as you can. The good thing with those is that the expiry date is usually years off. Go to flea markets, estate sales, and independent shops where you are sure to get a bargain price. Ask for a discount respectfully for something you really love. It might work out well, and you'll walk away with your item and some extra dollars saved. Number 4. Live within your means Rather than always spending money on the next rental, save up for your own home. You can cut down on costs by living with your parents as you get started. Independence is attractive till you find out that it punches holes in your pocket. If you can't afford that trip all your friends are excited about without going into debt, reconsider. Do you really need it? Will there be another trip? Saying no might be scary at first, but with time it will pay off, literally. You don't need to get a plate of fries at that fancy new restaurant when you can make your own. Don't spend a lot of money on a new car you can't afford to impress people you don't like when you can buy a second-hand vehicle that will do the job. Find entertainment within your price range. Stream a movie rather than see it in cinema. If you have to wince a little at the price, then reconsider. Is it worth it? This is not saying you will never enjoy those things, but you can get the same experiences and joy from the simple things without running yourself into debt. Number 3. Do it yourself The surest way to keep money is to do things yourself. You pay heavily for being lazy. During the Great Depression, our grandparents' generation had to get creative with how they lived. They started making their own cleaning supplies, sewing their own clothes, and even making toys for their children. Eating out was unheard of, especially since they could cook at home. They even went on to have their own urban vegetable gardens to cut down on how much they spent at the stores. It was hard at the time, but it sparked their creativity, and you will be surprised with what you can do. With YouTube tutorials for practically everything you could think of, there is no excuse for not knowing how to do some basics. You can wash your car if you have the time to spend on video games. You can also mow your own lawn and save that money. But if you have some extra time, you can offer to help a neighbor and get some money out of it. Number 2. Pay in cash Back in the depression, credit cards were unheard of. Credit cards are a recent development and unfortunately, so many people have taken them on thinking they are a better option. But there are so many disadvantages that come with credit cards. For one, if you keep charging expenses to your card, you can't keep track of how much you are actually spending. If you pay in cash, you start to see how fast money slips out of your pocket if you are not more mindful. This will keep you alert to buy only what you can afford and help you make better decisions when it comes to your spending habits. Furthermore, it will also save you from having to pay the interest charged on your credit cards. There's a freeing sense about this too. You don't have to dread the bill or live with a debt hanging over your head. If you enjoyed it so far, please like this video and leave a comment. What is your best way to save money? Number 1. Save you know that whatever money tip anyone that is going to give you, if it is worth listening to, is going to include saving. Another way to say that would be pay yourself first. For whatever you get, take off something for your savings account. You never know when you will use it. Also, it's not much about the amount, but cultivating the habit. Don't think you will do more with your money when you get more. You'll do the same things you are doing now except on a grander scale. The importance of saving is that you never know when your next emergency will creep up. The Great Depression showed the value of having an emergency fund and an active savings account. It might be all you can live on for a few months as you find your landing. If you save only $5 a day, you'll have $150 by the end of the month, and that figure will be significantly larger at the end of the year. Start with a piggy bank if you must. Get an automated savings account. Start thinking of retirement now.